Good evening. The deadly COVID-19 virus has killed four more people in our province, and there are 53 new positive cases being reported tonight, bringing BC's total close to 1,200. BC is also responding tonight strongly to a directive from U.S. President Donald Trump. He has told an American manufacturer to stop exporting N95 masks to Canada. Our Tanya Fletcher is here live this evening. So, Tanya, how is our province's health minister reacting to that? Yeah, Mike, Adrian Dix called the news disappointing but not surprising. He says those actions are wrong and don't make sense for Canadians or Americans. Now, uh, remember, there are pulp and paper mills on Vancouver Island that provide material to the U.S. to make these kinds of critical supplies like masks and gowns, too. But Dix doesn't believe we should respond with retaliation because he says this is a global effort. Rather than contributing and making the province problem worse and going tit for tat, we should work together for a result that will benefit all of us. Part of the reason we have challenges in British Columbia is because there were challenges in Washington state that COVID-19 doesn't know borders. And we want our American friends to do well. We want their response to COVID-19 to be effective. And now Dix is also clearly pushing Ottawa to do more to monitor and enforce the Federal Quarantine Act for travelers returning on repatriation flights. We see that uh, he says more screening and blatant messaging needs to happen, not only on arrival at YVR, but also at the departure level in other countries so that passengers know the 14 day isolation rule even before they land. We need to actively follow up with cases. We need access to the full information. When people come to Canada, the BC health system needs that access to full information from the government of Canada. We need individuals uh, uh, where, where necessary to support by dropping off food so that when people come to airports, they don't go past and go to Save On. They don't go to Safeway. They don't go to Costco. They go home and they stay home. And Tanya, Dr. Bonnie Henry has also asked uh, why we're not seeing people being ticketed in BC for, for disobeying her physical distancing orders. That's right. Dr. Henry says there's really no evidence right now to show that type of enforcement is necessarily effective. She says it's challenging for bylaw officers to police those actions, and she's defending BC's strategy, calling it a reasonable approach. I am much more concerned about those parties, those host parties, the, the having people over um, and mixing and then them going off with others and mixing. So that's when we get these little chains of transmission is when you're spending some time with this group of people, but some of them are with another group of people. And those are the things that transmit this virus. And just on one more note, there have been complaints that health care workers uh, can't find a spot at the parking lots because those lots are full now that it's free. Some drivers have been taking advantage and parking there, then hopping on the bus or the SkyTrain. Well, Dick says they are aware, but he added that that kind of misuse is unacceptable and they'll try to find a way to start enforcing that. Mike? All right, Tanya Fletcher reporting live tonight. Thanks. Well, with plenty of talk about a shortage of protective equipment, some good news locally tonight. Turns out several Vancouver area manufacturers are about to deliver thousands of reusable medical gowns for frontline medical health workers. As Eric Rankin of our Impact Team reports, they are gowns designed and produced right here in BC. Mustang Survival is now churning out survival gear of a different kind. Its entire Burnaby factory retooled switching from life jackets, survival suits, and other gear for the public, Coast Guard, and military to reusable, innovative medical gowns coming to the rescue of local frontline health workers during the COVID crisis. As soon as we heard that medical supplies were in, uh, there were shortages in some of the gowns or other medical supplies, the moment we heard that, uh, we expected to uh, jump in and start helping out. Vancouver Coastal Health asked for that help two weeks ago. The target to produce 5,000 gowns a week over the next two months, 90,000 in total, all below market rates. It's very crazy. It's been a very busy uh, last couple of weeks, to be honest with you, and uh, everybody's pushing hard. Mustang has partnered with other lower mainland companies, including outdoor clothing giant Arcteryx and Cabro, which launders medical gowns for hospitals, plus local fabric suppliers and commercial sewers to test and produce a prototype isolation gown made from a waterproof fabric that can withstand repeated sterilization and reuse. The main thing is we're trying to prevent water or any other sort of liquid penetration and then it's got the added benefit of it's breathable so they can stay comfortable and uh, stay focused.
In addition to Mustang, Arcteryx pledges its new S factory will start gown production this weekend. Vancouver Coastal Health says it's grateful and wants to work with local businesses to find local solutions. Mustang says inquiries are now coming in from Toronto and the U.S. But what about manufacturers sharing secrets with local rivals? Sometimes you need to sacrifice a little bit of that secrecy to, to move the ball forward. And then when this is all over, we'll create new secrets. Next up for Mustang and his partners, the manufacture of surgical masks as they work to alleviate that shortage. Eric Rankin, CBC News, Burnaby.